This is a brief overview of LegTool, the library and application I've developed for inverse kinematics and gate control for legged robotic applications. LegTool lets you easily configure a complex mech with many actuators and legs, visualize the inverse kinematics of each leg, and experiment with different gate generation parameters. It can drive simulated robots in Gazebo, or actual robots using a modular interface to servo actuators. This video will give a brief overview of the capabilities of LegTool as of July 2014, and walk through how to install and use it on an Ubuntu Linux system. To start with, the software itself is available on GitHub at jpeeper slash legtool. We can use git to clone that repository to get started. Just copy the URL from the GitHub page, run git clone, and cd into the directory. Following the directions from the readme, ensure that you have pygazebo, pyside, and pygame installed on your machine. We'll just copy and paste the instructions to the readme into the terminal. On this machine, all the dependencies are already satisfied, so these commands are just no-ops. Next, we want to set up Gazebo so that it can find the sample model for LegTool. To do that, just symlink the LegTool directory into your .gazebo directory using the command from the readme. Now we can start up Gazebo from the command line, then use the Insert tab and select the leg to leg tool model to place it somewhere easily visible on the world. So we will insert, select leg tool, and place it somewhere useful and then zoom in so that we can see it. Alright, now we can use scans to build the necessary files for leg tool and we're ready to start it up. To select a configuration to use and save to, specify it on the command line with the dash C option. We'll just use the sample gazebo.cfg included in the leg tool distribution. Now we can see the primary leg tool interface. It's composed of multiple tabs, each operating at a higher level ab abstraction than the previous. This first tab allows for raw control of all the servos in the system. Before starting, you must select whether leg tool will drive the gazebo simulator or an actual robot, and configure the selected method appropriately. The sample gazebo configuration is already set up for the sample model. Once configuration is complete, you can click the connect button to activate the rest of the tab. The rest of the tab has basic pose creation and manipulation tools. There is a list of all created poses in the lower left. You can add a new pose, remove an old pose, move all the servos to the selected pose, or save all servos position to that pose. The upper right has a field to select whether the servos will be free moving, in break mode, or actively driven to the current position. The capture current button records the current position of all the servos. The majority of the window is comprised of a series of rows for each servo. The slider or spin box lets you move each servo. Save records the current servo position to the selected pose, and move moves just that servo to the saved value in the selected pose. The sample configuration has the minimum three poses created which are necessary for later stages. The idle pose, which has the mech placed in a canonical idle position, and the minimum and maximum achievable minimum and maximum poses, which have all the servos at their minimum and maximum achievable values. 
Note that it isn't necessarily the case that all servos can reach their minimum or maximum values at the same time without collision. In leg tool, you should just be careful and update servos individually if placing all servos in one of these configurations would result in a self-collision. Now let's move on to the second tab. This presents an inverse kinematics configuration tool. For each leg, you can configure whether it is present, which servo is attached to which link, and for each servo, what sign corresponds to which direction. The remaining fields apply to all servos. While the library allows them to be unique per leg, the user interface does not expose this. You need to select which pose corresponds to the idle, minimum, maximum, and the maximum of each leg. And this configures the geometry of the leg. The IK offset and test are not configuration, but allow you to test the resulting inverse kinematic configuration. The IK offset sets the center point of the test. The plane field allows you to select which axes to control. Then the lower right corner illustrates the achievable region of motion in white green and the unachievable region in red. If you are connected to a servo, you can actuate any of the legs by clicking in the test region. This will position the leg at that point. The shade of green illustrates how fast the end of the leg can move in a particular axis. Once each of the legs has been configured, we can then move on to the third tab, the gate configuration tab. The top left of the Gate Configuration tab has fields for defining the physical geometry of the robot. For each leg, you can enter the X, Y, and Z position of the shoulder point. For the robot as a whole, you can enter the center of gravity location. The Idle Position field defines where the legs are positioned when idle. While the library allows this to be unique for each leg, the user interface only presents a single idle position for all legs. The upper right shows a 2D rendering of relevant points on the robot. The blue diamonds are shoulders, the green circles are the ends of legs, the red square is the body center, and the yellow circle is the center of gravity. The green shaded area is the su current support polygon defined by the leg endpoints. As we change mounting parameters, you can see the rendering update. This allows you to quickly verify that the mechanical configuration is entered correctly. The lower left area contains gate specific parameters. Currently there is only one type of gate supported, the ripple gate. It has a number of parameters you can adjust grouped into two sections, basic and statically stable. The most important of the basic parameters are the maximum cycle time and the leg order. For statically stable gates, the maximum cycle time can be arbitrarily long, but for non-statically stable gates, it will need to be relatively fast. The leg order determines in which order the legs are lifted. You can enter a comma-separated set of leg numbers here. For more variety in gate configurations, you can also enter groups of legs in parentheses. All the legs in a group will be lifted simultaneously. In the statically stable section, the most interesting parameter is the checkbox that determines whether the gate is statically stable or not. If it is enabled, then the gate engine will attempt to keep the center of gravity of the robot inside the support polygon at all times, and do so by at least the margin specified. The upper middle contains the gate graph. This shows a timeline when each leg is in the air. It is useful to double check the other gate parameters, especially the leg ordering, grouping, and the various timing margins. 
In the very middle is the playback area. Here you can select a state to begin from. Currently only the idle and steady state option are supported. There is a slider which lets you scrub forward and backwards through a single gate cycle. Finally, there are playback buttons which cycle through the gate either a single time or infinitely in the case of repeat or at one tenth speed. The command fields provide a textual method of setting the current command to the gate engine. The command window in the lower right provides a graphical means to do so. For the command window, you can select which command corresponds to which axes. Then in the window itself, it renders all achievable commands in green, commands which are speed limited in yellow, and unachievable commands in red. You can click on the window to set the command to that value immediately. Finally, we can revisit the geometry view in the upper right. It allows you to view the geometry in one of three reference frames. The default is the robot reference frame, which is the frame to which commands apply. There is also the body frame, which is centered on the body, and the world frame, through which the robot frame moves. You can also view from the top, the x-y axes, or from the side or the back of the robot, and also change the scale of view. As we run the repeat here, you'll see the robot move through its gate engine on all axes. That's the world frame, the robot frame, and the body frame. And the command can be changed in mid-flight. Similarly, the axes. Ultimately, this third tab lets the developer tweak parameters, observe the results on the achievable command envelope, and also in de debug individual gate options or parameters by stepping around in time to see why things aren't working the way you expect them to. That finishes up my tour of LegTool. There are still a lot of rough edges, but it is already pretty usable for a lot of development. Thanks for watching.